Stand by SOT1. Standing. 10 seconds. Ready, rolling. Ready, SOT1. Ready. In four, three, two, one. Roll in. From legendary Uncle Studios in beautiful Southern California, welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters, the central location for you employees, you employers, and of course, we haven't forgotten about you damn independent contractors. And now, here's this week's edition of Work Comp Matters. It's exactly 12.04 on July 3rd, 2020. Welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters. We are brought to you by theworkcompcentral.com. If you want the number one location for workers' compensation in both California and around the United States, check out theworkcompcentral.com. They've got a free seven-day offer. And if you want to pick up their services, I have them. You should, too. It's only a dollar a day. Work Comp Matters is also brought to you by A1 Law, number one computer management system, 818 357 4120 for your no strings attached money back guaranteed one dollar a day a one law well good afternoon everybody mike is off i'm joined by the madman across the water mr john scalia and one of the co-hosts of the dave hagan wellness podcast my son nick appel how you doing son uh the financial wellness podcast thank you dad uh, That's everything my- Everything is good here. Um, you know, it's a beautiful day and uh, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. So thank you for having me. It, it is my pleasure. Thank you for accepting the invite. And John Scalia, how is it out there in Munich, Germany? John, you are muted somehow, so we can't hear you. I can see John talking. Forgot, forgot, there forgot, you forgot, go. Muted, yeah, that, no. John is used yeah, to so- John is John was expecting me to go on a five to ten minute rant. And I didn't do it today. So, John, how is it out there in Munich, Germany? It's beautiful, and it was a beautiful day all day. You know, it's uh, it's about nine oh five here right now, and uh, I was running in the park this morning, and it was a gorgeous day. It was a beautiful day to be running. Uh, it's just been a really really nice summery day. Although it was uh, although it was a little over actually it was overcast in the morning, and it's been cool. It was like sixty degrees. It's really cool. Um, I am so glad that Nick is on the show because I asked him a very, very brief question the last time I spoke to him, and I didn't prepare him for this. But uh, as those of you may know, Nick's been living in San Diego for a couple of years. And as we all know, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, who I refer to so affectionately as the Gav, has essentially locked down 19 counties. However, where Nick lives, if I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, San Diego County has not been knocked down as part of one of those 19. Is that correct? If I knock down. Uh, bars closed, beaches closed, restaurants closed, no singing in church, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, unfortunately, you're wrong on this one. Uh, oh. It's uh, it, San Diego has been affected. Uh, but what I think is most interesting is that... Uh, you know, you guys in L.A. County have a mayor who is trying to enforce all beaches to be locked down. And you have a sheriff that says, no, thank you. And the sheriff is not on the same page as the mayor. Any explanation for that? Um, in addition to that, I think Garcetti came out and said, if you want to protest, it's OK. But if you want to go lay on the beach, you can't. Uh, John and I have spoken with John and I have batted the ball back and forth so many times. Uh, John living in Munich, Germany. uh, Apparently uh, the population there is extremely compliant with what all of the German government is asking them to do, but out here in the United States and as Nick correctly indicated, LA County, we are like the wild, wild West. Uh, John, you got a response to Nick's Nick's comment, which is a very valid comment. Well, I, I think it's jur- well, yeah. First of all, the sheriff's out of line, but secondly, I think it's a jurisdictional turf war because the beaches, if I'm not mistaken, the beaches are under the under the auspices of the county, the sheriff, and not LAPD. I don't even I don't even know if Venice Beach is under the auspices of the beach itself, 
of LAPD? Because, you know, I know all the lifeguards on the beach are all county lifeguards. They're not city lifeguards. They're county lifeguards. So it could be just a jurisdictional turf thing. Nick, do you find that the average age in San Diego County is older than uh, in Los Angeles? I, I don't have any empirical information on that, but that's my suspicion. What do you think? I think that's just overbroad. I think it's too... Um, it's too overbroad to answer. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, San Diego had been a right-wing Republican community, but being becoming more of a, a college town, you go to school there, um, I think it's become more liberal. And I think one of the facts that we've talked about before that back up that, and it might be a very broad general assumption, is the way that San Diego deals with the homeless. Um, Nick, and how seen, how does San Diego deal with the homeless? That's why I'm bringing this up because hopefully you'll have an answer. Uh, you've lived in LA County. You much prefer living in San Diego. You saw the way the homeless were treated when you lived here a couple of years ago, and then in the past couple of years. You've been living in San Diego, which has a very prevalent uh, homeless population. Tell me, what, what are your what are your opinions? Yeah, well, I mean, are we talking about pre-COVID, during COVID? How about both? Time period? How about both? Uh, okay, well, starting off with pre-COVID, I do know that there are parts of San Diego that have a bigger population of homeless. However... Nothing compares to Los Angeles. I mean, you guys allow en encampments to occur. You guys allow literally towns of homeless, which I just don't understand. And at least here, what I think, is, what I really appreciate is, I don't know this for a fact, so don't you know hold me to it, but the city, at least part of its tax, goes to cleaning up the streets whereas i've seen pictures of la county that they don't do anything and people or citizens need to take it upon themselves to clean up the streets which i think it is ridiculous but during covid i there's really not much homeless here i i don't know what's occurring so i can't speak to it but it's uh it's it's nice I can tell you that during COVID here in Los Angeles, that the state, the city, the county contracted with uh, motels and hotels and pretty much paid for a lot of the homeless to get off the street and into some type of housing. I have one particular person who I'm going to get on the show and he was living in a Motel 6 for like three months. And I just spoke to him last week. Free of rent? The, it's, yeah, it's charged, it's charged to the government. He doesn't have to pay anything. He what got, am I doing over here paying like a lot of rent? You're, you're, going, to, you're going to school getting a top-notch education. That's what you're doing down there. Yeah, and I have to take out loans to afford this. How true. John Scalia, we have never, I don't think, spoke about the homeless in Munich, Germany. John, are there homeless in Munich, Germany? Yeah, there are. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near <laughs> the, kind, the, the kinds of numbers uh, that you have in LA or probably even San Diego, but there are homeless. Um, you know, we, the word for it in German is obdachlos. But anyway, yeah. And, and uh, but there's lots of social programs here too. So, you know, it, part of it is, I think, so a, a number of homeless people don't want to be part of any kind of social program. A number of homeless people just don't want to be part of society. And, and I know that because when I, when I was going to church in, in, in San Fernando Valley, one of the things we did was we brought, we brought food to the, to the big park. What's the big park out there? Um, what city? Big park in, in the Valley. It's uh, Balboa Valley. Park, uh, Encino Park. No, it's further north. It's it's um, anyway. Okay. It's yeah. you know it's it's huge. It's a big. It's one of the original parks, I think. Anyway, uh, we bring food there and and serve meals and 
And my impression was, you know, this was during a time of economic, it was during one of the reset, brief recessions in America. And a lot of the people there were just down on their luck. And that was obvious. It was obvious who they were. There was probably a good 20%, which, you know, is still just one out of five, who were there because they had mental problems and simply weren't able to function in society. And a few of them who just didn't want to. I mean, you know, that was part of the homeless population in the park. And, I mean, it's, you know, it actually, sounds like a it sounds like a Chaz. Well, it's you know, I mean, it, it was based on going there and feeding feeding people and talking to them. I mean, we we, we didn't just you know we were out there. In fact, we finally got a directive from uh, one of the county health authorities about our food because we, you know we weren't complying with some sort of ordinance for hot food being delivered. So we had to change how we prepared the food, but. But but we we ate with them. I mean, it wasn't like we just simply served them and didn't talk to them. So you got to know some of them, and you got you got a feeling for why they were there, and uh, whether or not they they wanted to be helped or could be. Sorry about that, guys. And that is all uh, good stuff. My name is Steve Appel. You're dialed into Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by the. WorkCompCentral.com. If you want the number one location for workers' compensation in both California and around the United States, check out the WorkCompCentral.com. They've got a free seven-day offer. And if you want to pick up their services, I have them, you should too. It's only a dollar a day. Work Comp Matters is also brought to you by A1 Law, number one computer management system, 818-357-4120 for your no strings attached, money back guaranteed. One dollar a day, A1 Law. Thanks for joining us uh, for Work Comp Matters. Uh, I'm here with my son, Nick, and the madman across the water, John Scalia. And this is going to be the first 4th of July where there's probably not going to be any fireworks. And certainly the government is um, doing their best to keep everybody from getting together in large groups, uh, unless, of course, you're pro protesting or having a sign, then it's perfectly okay to gather with hundreds, if not thousands uh, of people. But if you're not protesting, stay away. I saw something from the Insurance Journal that came across my newswire today, and I wanted to read that. And then I wanted to talk to, uh, ask both Nick and John uh, what their plans are for 4th of July. Uh, this is from the Insurance Journal. Tomorrow is America's 244th birthday. We live in an imperfect country, that's certain. We live in a broken country, that's clear. We live in a divided country, that's sad. We also live in a great country. It doesn't matter where you started in this country, you can go anywhere and follow your conscience to become who you want to be, who you are called to be. On this day, I choose to remember the group of imperfect people who came up with a grand idea all those years ago and all those who have stood up to declare their allegiance to something bigger than themselves since then. Nope, no perfect people, just people. Idealists, maybe. But if believing that your home as imperfect as it is, is a gift worth defending, protection, loving, and nurturing into all that it could be, then call me an idealist. You can choose to see her for her failures. That's your right. I see her for who she can be. If we could all embrace the great ideals that are behind America, that's my right. Happy Independence Day. Keep learning. Patrick. And that is from the Insurance Journal. I guess Patrick's the owner or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm in my backyard tomorrow. Uh, I've invited a select few. I don't know who's coming over. Going to be by the pool. I'm going to be with my barbecue. And I'm going to be uh, with my tequila. And... Um, Oh, goodness. Uh, goodness You're, gracious, yes. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, see, I don't have to drive. I have people come to me. Therefore, it's okay. If I, if I want to get sloppy drunk and throw up, I only have to walk a couple of steps to the trash can. You know oh, I mean? boy, how this podcast is different than mine. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing, son, that's different um, 
uh, has the, okay, it's called The Financial Wellness Podcast. Is that correct? Or TFWP for short. Okay. Has TFWP ever from start to finish not taken a break? Um, what do you mean? Have you ever stopped? Have you ever not stopped recording? Have you ever gone all the way through without stopping recording? I, uh, I, I, I think there are times where we edit, but I think editing is, uh, you know, a part of a broadcast. And I think usually editing, you know, is, uh, you know, it, it occurs. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I guess answering your question in short, I, I would say uh, no. Um, which, uh, you know, besides the fact that on the financial wellness podcast, you guys are talking about stuff that I only briefly touch on, mostly because I'm not educated enough to intelligently talk about it. But we treat work comp matters. We treat it like a radio show. Uh, I call it a, a radio podcast, an audio podcast. We start we go, if there are mistakes, there are mistakes, and boom. And not a lot of shows and podcasts are done that way. You're right. Uh, and I understand uh, why Dave uh, wants to make it as perfect as possible because he's not doing what I do. He's not imitating uh, a radio show. He's, he's, he wants to put out, in his mind, uh, the most perfect podcast he can. And I respect that. Uh, John Scalia, what are your plans for tomorrow? Well, actually, there's a subgroup of the um, Internations group that I belong to here in Munich. And one of the subgroups is it's an American subgroup. And I only join because really because of the 4th of July activities and occasionally, you know. And so, so one of the guys in the group who's actually German and American. Uh, has a, a dinner tomorrow night that we're all going to get together and go to dinner on. I, I actually think I'm going to be the only total American there. He's more German than he is American. His dad was, <laughs> I, yeah, well, his dad, he was born in America, I believe, and his dad was in the American military or with the American military, and I think he's lived in the States and maybe done some stuff with them too. But by and large, he's pretty German. I mean, his, his, his name is Axel, not exactly an all-American name, right? Axel um, Rose? Yeah, exactly. And and so so we're going to get together for dinner. And so it should be very nice. It should be entertaining. As I said, I was out last night to dinner and it's just really nice to be able to go out to dinner again with human beings. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, you really miss the human contact with all the, all that's gone on. Yeah. John was out the other night. He had a great time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, John, what'd you do? We just ate dinner. We drank and ate dinner and talked. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just dinner, dinner and talk. But it was his first uh, restaurant, bar and grill in like three months or something. Right, John? Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely understand. And I resonate with that. Um, you know, going to law school in my third year, I, I was seeing the same people every single day. And then all of a sudden, snap of fingers. What do you know? <laughs> it, 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 it's just like... And now I'm quarantined to my 500 square like square foot studio, and so I I, I miss the human interaction. I, I do. Um, yeah, no, it's when you're used to all that socialization, it it really is hard when it's taken away. I mean, I've been fortunate in the sense that my my normal activities weren't you know my other activities weren't that interrupted. I mean, I'm a runner, and we didn't close the parks down in Germany. And we didn't restrict anybody over 70 to their house so I could keep running in the park. Um, I, I, I write books, and I've been working on my third book, so I was able to keep writing. What's it about? Uh, I'm on the, pardon? What's it about? The book I'm doing now? Yeah. The book I'm, the book I'm doing now is about stories from, from my courtroom experiences. Um, my, my other two books, my first book was an autobiography, which, by the way, is quite funny. And the second book I wrote is an actual philosophy book. It's a real philosophy textbook. It's called The Philosophy of Common Sense. But basically, yeah, it's an exposition on existentialism applied to life. The philosophy of common sense. I, I Sometimes I wish more people, uh, let's just say I wish more people would read that. <laughs> Nick, you well, brought up law school. Yeah, I, I wish somebody question. would read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick, what do you got planned for tomorrow, if anything? 
Oh, I'm having a uh, tequila tasting. There you go. Are you having it inside, out, uh, where? Both. Wonderful. And have you bought the tequilas yet? I'm not buying anything. My uh, girlfriend's family, fortunately, they um, they love tequila and at least sipping it. And we're drinking anything from Don Julio on Yeho all the way up to Cas Casa Azul. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic time. That is wonderful. We've got about, oh, I don't know, maybe seven, eight minutes left. Nick, you are you up- rushing me off? Come on, Dad. <laughs> this is a half hour show, son. <laughs> Since when? I thought it was an hour show. Nope. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it stopped being an hour show, COVID-19. We used to do one hour on Wednesday night. And since COVID-19, we've done 30 minutes, five days a week at noon. But you you brought up law school. And John, I don't know if you know this. Nick goes to Cal Western, which had the number one graduation rate recently announced. I'm wrong? Oh, I thought it did. Oh, I'm sorry. Number one bar passage rate for those taking uh, total taking the bar, correct? For February, yes. Right, exactly. And I just wanted to ask you briefly, um, what do you attribute that to? And how do you like your experience at uh, Cal Western now that you've uh, completed two years? I'll answer the first part. I think it's attributed to people who want to graduate in a faster pace than others. I think it's also attributed to hard work, dedication, and to those who, you know, uh, I think this comes down to grit. If you have the hard work, you have dedication, you'll be a lawyer. And I think it uh, also comes down to personal responsibility. I was just blown away when I saw that because I know that takes into consideration UCLA, Stanford, Berkeley. I mean, all of the top no. schools. No, you're shaking. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, no. So basically, the uh, California State Bar only takes into account schools that have 11 or more uh, applicants and bar exam takers. Mm-hmm. So those schools that do not have 11 or more bar exam takers, uh, they are uh, excluded from the stats. I, 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 I did. I just want to make it clear that um, my school did great. However, it's not taken into account with every school in California. And I appreciate you uh, clearing that up. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, John, you wanted to say a few things? Yeah, I did. Of course. Uh, and what I, what I wanted to point out, as per usual, was the fact that when all this COVID thing began, I don't know if anybody remembers, but I warned people about the fact that it was going to provide great cover for dictatorial governments to, to put in violations of civil liberties and that civil liberties were going to be greatly at risk. And it's already coming to pass. I mean, the other day, Turkey convicted four human rights activists of terror charges. And one of them was the guy who was in charge of Amnesty International. Not exactly a terrorist group, but if you're Amnesty International in a dictatorship, Well, yeah, you're going to be a terrorist group. And so he was convicted along with a couple other people. Uh, Some of them were part of the Gulen Network. That's a different story. But Amnesty International certainly is not. The other place where this is obviously going on is Hong Kong, where the Chinese government is using that as cover to basically assimilate Hong Kong into mainland China and to cancel all their rights. The problem is that the Chinese have said, well, this is an internal matter. Nobody should tell us anything, so I'll shut up. And Cuba, another dictatorship, introduced a bill in the the United Nations, actually supported by 51 other questionable countries, saying that everybody should butt out of China's affairs and not say anything. The problem, of course, is that Hong Kong is a special case. Hong Kong was given to the China. I mean, the Chinese asserted jurisdiction over Hong Kong with an agreement with the British in 1997. And that's an international agreement. So the fact is that it's just not an internal matter. The Chinese would love to say, you know, it's none of your business, but that ignores how Hong Kong came to be what Hong Kong is today. 
So well, I mean, countries. What? Sorry, John, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have a quick question. I mean, wasn't yeah. China and Hong Kong essentially under two different, um, I don't want to say governments because it's not, but uh, it's like Hong Kong was autonomous to yes. China. Yeah, well, that was the agreement. The agreement was it's going to be one country, two systems. And the right. system, of course, meant freedom of speech, independent judiciary. And, you know, and of course, the British, who don't even get me started on the British, they're great at running away from everything. You know, so the <laughs> British turned turn it over with this agreement. And, you know, and they figure, well, it's 50 years. Now, you know, look at that, 50 years. Well, you know, the Chinese, 50 years is one day. And, and sure enough, it's now 23 years. And they're saying, okay, your time's up. And we're, we're going to take over. So what's going on is that these dictatorial governments are, are using this period when the only thing being covered in the news is COVID-19. And they're becoming more and more repressive and more and more dicta- dictatorial. And I said that when this whole thing started, and it's coming true. Well, I'm wondering what my dad has an opinion about this. I mean, uh, come on, dad. Um, Actually, I have no opinion because I'm totally <laughs> ignorant on it. Uh, John brought it up before we went on the air, uh, before, uh, and I said, John, go ahead and talk about it because well, well, I have no idea. You, I, well, I mean, what I think is so uh, – ignorance is the wrong word. What I think is so poor – is I just saw this video of a protester in Hong Kong and literally the protester was just holding a sign and he got pushed back by uh, not a fire cannon, but like, you know, like with the uh, water cannon. Fire, water cannon. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I, I can't help to think I'm like, that was just happening in the United States. Um, you know, with the BLM. Uh, protests. Well, the, the I mean, however, the difference, the, the difference is they the they don't they don't Hong have now. they don't have civil the same civil rights that we do. They, they don't did. have the a difference, right. They do, They yeah. did. That's my point. Yeah, and that's the, the issue. The, the point. The point is now that sign can get you tried for treason and get you a life sentence in jail. Exactly. Whereas, whereas two days ago, before the law was passed, you, it was guaranteed under the two you know two systems, one country, two systems guarantee that they signed with the Brits. See, what isn't it? Go, go ahead, Nick. Go, go ahead, Nick. No, I'm saying, isn't it funny how freedom of speech just uh, gets abrogated so quick? Oh, yeah. Well, it's one of the easy things to abrogate, and that's why. You know, I mean, that's why And governments governments really are good at abrogating it, They're, you know, because they can do it easily. Fortunately, in America, we have lots of constitutional protections, and, you know, the, the system of law that you're becoming part of is what guarantees America's freedom. Don't believe all right. this stuff about the army guaranteeing freedom. Don't believe all this stuff about the national defense budget guaranteeing freedom. You and the people who pass the bar with you are the people who will guarantee the freedom of America. Well, thank you so much. I love the positive vibes that are going on right now. That I'm, is- just, I, I'm just still waiting for the third amendment to come back into play. So <laughs> let's wait for that. <laughs> and the, uh, uh, John, thank you. That's a good closing remark. Nick, that's an excellent closing remark. And for those of you out there listening that do not remember, although the United States is the oldest country in existence, it is the, pardon me, strike that. Although the United States is the <laughs> youngest country in existence, it is the oldest form of government on the planet and that is true um you've been listening the brits would, the brits would disagree but that's okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're dialed into work comp matters and i appreciate you for listening i want to thank my son nick and nick i'm going to call you after the show it's been a pleasure yeah john scalia i'm not going to call you on uh, after the show but i will i will talk why to you are you discriminating <laughs> Why are you putting Americans before Germans? That's not nice. (laughs) I want to thank Scott Walton of Legendary Uncle Studio for continuing to engineer the show and put up with someone like me. We, of course, brought to you by A1 Law and uh, theworkcompcentral.com. My name is Steve Appel, and we'll see you again Monday for another edition of Work Comp Matters. 